recall that Fred Francis is now confirming there have been exchanges of artillery fire along the Iraqi-Saudi border. No reports yet of troop movements across the border in either direction. Fred, are they anticipating that there may be some ground forces engaged before too long? Tom, we know that uh, some of the U.S. Army units have flown their Apache tank-killing helicopters across the border and have engaged in some kind of combat. And we are told that uh, the very formidable Iraqi artillery yeah, yeah. Uh, fired, yeah. south, right. fired south into uh, uh, fired south yeah. into Kapchi, which is a village in the northeastern part of Saudi Arabia, and the forward-most position where Saudi troops are dug in. And there was an exchange of artillery fire there, and some of the Saudi troops pulled back, and not in retreat, but just in, in a tactical move. But there has been no movement across the border. Uh, artillery uh, exchanges back and forth could have been expected, but there have been no mobile, uh, no tanks going north, no tanks coming south. That was not expected on the Iraqi side that they would attack south. They're certainly not in that position to do, do so, and it was certainly not expected that the U.S. would attack north. So, uh, as we talked earlier about the best case scenario, the worst case scenario is, uh, like General Odom said, Bill Odom said, that the, the air war will not knock out all the Republican Guards Division and all those dug-in troops, and that U.S. tanks in 10 or 12 days will have to move, move north and will have to go through that artillery fire, which I said is very formidable. Fred, did they ever work out that business about the Syrian ground troops and whether or not they would become actively involved? Yes, they did, Tom, and they worked it out a long time ago, and the Syrians just didn't want to make it public. The Syrians said they would go into Kuwait, yeah, right. but they would not go into Saudi, they would not go into uh, to Iraq. So it's fully expected that, that uh, again, we're talking rosy scenarios here, but if there are surrenders, and if there are large areas of Kuwait uh, that, uh, that uh, the Allied forces have to move into, that the Egyptians and the Syrians will do that, and the U.S. forces will not do that. And the Syrians have agreed to go into Kuwait. They have agreed to be combat players in this if that becomes necessary. They have not agreed to go into Iraq. And uh, I doubt that uh, troops going into Iraq would be necessary. That would be a very worst case scenario. Um, but the fact is the United States is not very eager to go into Iraq either, right? Oh, not at all. I mean, uh, yeah, again, uh, something that Bill Odom said, uh, <laughs> you don't start a war without knowing what kind of peace you want to have, and, and, uh, and I don't think this has been fully thought out. Bill Oda mentioned uh, we may have to put some sort of administration into Iraq. Well, that would be a terrible thing. I, you know, that would mean a long-term presence for a very, a, a long-term presence for U.S. soldiers. You don't want to go into Iraq and sort of set up a government. Although I will tell you that uh, the United States Army and the Pentagon has planned to go into Kuwait uh, to reestablish a civil government there. And there are approximately 2,000 uh, U.S. servicemen, Guard and Reserves, who are in Saudi Arabia now, who are planning that to go into Kuwait to restore civil government before the Kuwaitis go back in. All right, Fred Francis at the Pentagon. Uh, we are still awaiting a second update tonight. We had the first one from Defense Secretary Dick Cheney and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Colin Powell, General Colin Powell, at uh, 9.30 tonight. That was about two and a half hours ago. No additional word. We will tell you that now in the Persian Gulf area in Iraq, it's about 8 o'clock in the morning. You're coming up on that, uh, about an eight-hour time difference there altogether.